Okay, beautiful story, friends. Related, this is another Kvach Abad, related by the Basha Zelikson, the longtime shliach in, uh, in Rabbi Minnesota. So he's being interviewed and he's telling stories of his Bokhash years in the 70s and the 60s. So just a story within a story here. So he said like this, that... Uh, In those days, very often, periodically, uh, groups of students, uh, high school students, university students, would be brought by Shluchim to the Rebbe in Yechidis um, for Yechidis. And they would ask their questions, the Rebbe would answer. I don't know if they've made a book of these Yechidis. It makes an entire book and a fascinating book. Uh, you know, as the nature of students, they ask very pointed questions like, what is a Rebbe? How did you become a Rebbe? And what does it mean to be a Rebbe? It's questions, Holocaust, God, science, etc. cetera. It, it, I'm sure one day they'll put it all together. So he says, Rabbi, uh, uh, what did I say his name was? I said, I think I said his name wrong. No, uh, Osher uh, Z- Zellingold. Zellingold. So he said like this, that once, so there's a group of students that were going to come into the Rebbe. Now we very much want, huh? Not even you. Pardon? So we very much wanted Bachrim to go in, to be inside. And, and, and sometimes we were, but on this particular occasion, I guess it, depending on the numbers, Rabbi Chadakov said, no one is going in. It's just the students and their, their professor, their teacher. Now, in Ganeid Natachten, I think it's still there, the room outside the Rebbe's room, which we call Ganeid Natachten, there's a small bench, which two people can sit on. So this bench was going to be brought into the Rebbe's room for the, it was two teachers. They, were, they would be sitting, the students would be standing. So, uh, so the Chadakov said the one who brings in the bench, of course, can, be in, can, can stay inside. So three of us, three Bachrim, <laughs> We grab this bench and no one's ready, no one's willing to let go. So uh Chalikov said, okay, so go in. So the students hadn't arrived yet. And they were at the 770, they hadn't ushered into the Rebbe's room yet. So we opened the door and the Rebbe's sitting at his desk and he's working. And Moir Godel, like we're learning now, he said, we're coming as quietly as we can, hoping the Rebbe's not look at us, as quietly as possible. And that was, you know, busy at his, at his desk. Uh, but we have to place it like right in front of the Rebbe's uh, desk. That's where, the, where the, the bench has to be placed, this little bench. We're trying to do it as in, what's the word? Is in, in the inconspicuous as possible, inconspicuous. However, all of a sudden, the Rebbe looked, pick up his head and sees these three, he says, the three fools carrying in. He says a bench which a child could carry it was a small little bench. He said, we were just froze. And, and it seemed like, like five seconds that I was looking at us. And in the end, broke out a big smile, like I understood exactly what had happened and said, a grace and dank thank you all. It's a moment. It's a moment of, of Hindu here too. That uh, it wasn't like, what? You know, thank you all and uh, etc." So just to conclude the story, I want to, as it connects to what we we're just learning this morning, so the Rabbi Zellingold says that on one occasion, uh, he remembers uh, the following thing that ever told the students. And we're talking about, we're learning the Maimon now, that the, the power of willpower, power of willpower. So the Rebbe said, told them as follows, when I was in Berlin as a student studying university, and so there was a fire in, in, the, in one of the houses, one of the apartments. Now, in the bathroom, one of the person, one of the fellas, somebody was there that couldn't get out through the front door because of the fire. But there was a hole in that room, and he went out and got out, thank God, through the hole. Short time later, he came back and he brought a measuring tape and he measured exactly the hole. And he saw that it's 100% with certainty that he just couldn't understand how was it possible that he was able to squeeze through. But the fact is that he did. 
So the Rebbe said, we see from here that when the willpower person really wants, then he can perform feats that consciously, measurably, it's impossible. And sadly, we don't use, we don't capitalize on the power of willpower in general. Most people don't really use it. And certainly, uh, you know, often for the right things. For the right thing, told before the story, because C.L. Lepler, he was born with intellectually very simple fella because he wanted so much to learn. He literally expanded the, the, the parameters of his mind and became, as you mentioned, a scholar, a formidable scholar. 